Hello YouTubers. Today we're going to do some surgery on this Garrett Sea Hunter Mark II underwater pulsed metal detector. This is the uh, main controller guts box. It's got all the different dials and everything. Uh, this one was given to me by a friend who had had it for quite a few years and it was sitting for about four or five years in his closet with the battery pack inside and the batteries of course corroded and this is a new battery pack I actually have one of these exact units that's in working order this is the battery pack out of it it takes eight double A cells which makes it uh, 12 volts and uh, so anyway this is uh, what happened is his is these contact points uh, actually corroded away and uh, made it so that uh, it didn't work obviously and uh, it also created some problems inside the battery compartment which I'll show you in just a second okay so what we're going to do is I've actually worked on this thing already and I'll explain to you what happened this is the battery compartment here this is a screw cap with an o-ring and what this cap does is actually it pushes the battery pack down inside this chamber here I hope you can see that and uh, it has a couple of springs down inside there and those are the contact things and if you can see I'll draw it out here in just a second but there's actually three screws in there two of the screws actually hold the uh, me. okay hopefully you can see up in there and there are two springs and three screws two of the screws hold the springs into position and the third screw is actually screwed into the face plate on the other end and it holds the unit together so what I'm going to do well originally I used some electric contact cleaner and sprayed that compartment filled it up and there seemed to be a little bit of extra goop left so I tried to use a choke and carburetor cleaner and what that did was to almost immediately start to dissolve the plastic in there that's why it looks a little shiny but uh, I was able to uh, clean that out and things were uh, done and it's just don't use that it makes a big mess anyway uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take that first screw out because I put it back together as you can see the one spring in there is not exactly lined up like it should be and uh, that's because I had to re bend it to uh, make it work I'll explain how that works in a minute uh, but I'm not sure if it's contacting the uh, actual battery thing but I think it is but the only way to check is take the unit back apart and see if I get 12 volts into the power line because it still does not come on so what we're going to do is we're going to take a, take that top screw out and uh, I'll show you how to open this case so we're going to do is look in there. Take the top screw out. It helps if you have a little magnetic traction there on your screwdriver. And then, in case. What it is, is it's got a nice 
O-ring, a double O-ring here, and there's a lip on the case here, which makes it a little easier. Just get a big knife and kind of wedge it in there, and as you can see, the case is starting to pull apart here. You go around to the other side, do the same thing, and then everything just comes off real nicely. And if you'll notice, the circuit board is on the top of the unit, right there, which makes it real, actually I think they designed it that way so that if you did accidentally get water in it and you were holding the unit upright, that the circuit board wouldn't get in the water. Now, if you look, the two uh, battery contacts come through right there. You can see the little pins. Okay, they actually uh, bend in a couple of right angles so that the spring is sitting in there. It's held by the two screws that are in there, but the end of the spring comes through and the wires are soldered onto these pins here and that goes over here to where the power actually plugs into the circuit board. Uh, there's four plugs on the board. This one here is for the actual coil. This is the power and these two here go to the different functions on the uh, control panel. So what I'm going to do is unplug this power cord and see if I can get the 12 volts, uh, put the battery pack back in, see if I can get the 12 volts to come through. If I do, then my problem is in this section of the board. And as you can look real close, you can see where I had to clean that up a little bit. There was some corrosion. There's still a little bit of goop there. But I used electrical cleaner and some Q-tips and cleaned it up and it may be that that actual power clip right there is not attached to the board for some reason somehow anyway that's the last place if the cord if my power is coming into the wires then it's not making it onto the panel and uh, I might have to try and re-solder that on but the rest of the panel if you look is really nice and clean but for some reason right there there was some dirt and some goopy stuff I don't know how it got there but there's still a little bit there but anyway we're going to uh, take a look at that and uh, I'm going to unclip this and check it with the meter and we'll see what we got so just hang on Okay, we're going to take this off here. Just have to squeeze on this thing and then it'll pop out just like that. And we have two little pins here. And that may be my problem. Let's lock on this part here. Yes. Okay, there's two pins there, and these are two sockets. But if you can see here, the ones. Okay, it did not work again. I do have 12 volts on the plug over here. 
And I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but the top pin is intact coming out of the back of this unit right here. But the bottom pin, as you can see, is missing. So what has happened is that corrosion has occurred and wiped out the contact of that battery contactor. Okay, we have the unit unplugged from everything. And my problem appears to be in this area down over here. Right here, which is where the battery wire plugs in. And it has caused some corrosion. That's mostly the lower pin. And I don't know if you can see correctly, but uh, let me get my other light. Hang on a second. There we go. It's right there, right next to that capacitor that the problem is that wire right down underneath in the back. You can see how big these pins are here on the back side of this other one. And the design is the same. The other pin is kind of de de degraded. So the easiest way for me to try and get this thing clean is to unsolder the capacitor, bend it up out of the way, and then I can get unlimited access to the back end there. And hopefully that little resistor or whatever thing that's soldered there is all right. And if you look, there are some black lines that appear to be connections, and maybe one of those is actually corroded in two. So I'm gonna try and fix that. And like I said, this is kind of a gift unit. Can't really send it in back for warranty because I've turned it all apart. And I live in the Caribbean, so sending it back is kind of not really an option anyway. But uh, if I can fix it, I'm fine. If not, you know, at least you know now what the inside of one looks like. So, like I said, there is the circuit board. There's the back of the panel. You can see the screw hole where the actual screw from the battery pack and you can see two little circles where the contacts actually from the back of the battery pack over there contact this face plate and, uh, and everything else looks good and uh, we'll have to see if I can fix this thing but that's how you uh, take apart a Garrett Mark II Sea Hunter and uh, hopefully we'll be able to fix this one and get it working. And uh, I have fixed the headphones. So at least that's an extra $100 unit right there that if I have to replace them on my other one, I have those to fall back on. But that's what the inside of a Garrett looks like. So anyway, there you are. And take care.